All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at a problem that a lot of people would not bother fixing, but it is a problem, so we're going to go ahead and fix it. Now, to show you what's going on, I want you to pay attention up here. We're going to zoom in to this area of the instrument cluster, and I'm going to turn the key to the run position without starting the engine. You should notice here we're supposed to see a seatbelt light because we don't have our seatbelt fastened, and it's not working. And I can tell you right now it is not the bulb. So what is that? Well, I'll take you through what that is. Let's go debug it. All right, guys, so let's consult the service manual from 1998, and let's take a look at what we need to do for this problem. So fasten safety belt indicator inoperative. Did you perform the instrument cluster check? Now, all that is is a walkthrough that the gauges are working and the other bulbs are working. This is to make sure you don't have a more fundamental problem where nothing's working. We don't have that problem, so we're going to go to step two. Remove the audio alarm module from the convenience center. Connect a fuse jumper from terminal K3 of the audio alarm module to battery plus and see if it lights up. So that's our first test. I'm expecting this to fail, although I haven't done it already. And if it does fail, we're going to be jumping right down to replacing the audio alarm module. So let's take a look at what the pinout looks like on that module. So we're going to go to another section here. We're going to take a look at the convenience center itself. This is underneath the dash. I'll show it to you in just a minute. And we're going to find that K cavity here. So there's K1, 2, 3, and 4 that relate to this module. K1 being the seatbelt switch signal. K2 being ground. And K3 being the seatbelt indicator lamp output, which is what we're going to test basically going to run positive power to K3 and we're going to see if it lights up the indicator on the dash. All right, this convenience center is located on the driver's side under the dash. So to familiarize yourself with it, here's the brake pedal. We're going to pan the camera over and under. And you can see this convenience center is right here in the back. Now, the orientation from the book, like most of the times in the service manual, is looking at it from as if you were in the engine compartment looking in not looking at this direction head on so it's kind of a mirror image this is the audio alarm module right here to get this guy off so we can put the flashlight in a place where you guys can actually see so we got this little retainer here we're going to pull out and then we're going to wiggle him loose so it's just held on by that little guy right there and this little guy right here and so again we're and, and so you got seven male connectors on this module and this is a part number if you guys can see that 1596639 is the original part number from 1998 all right so this guy plugs in here j4 is here this is the unused cavity you can use that to kind of orient yourself with the picture but the other thing you can do to orient yourself is to find K2, which is the ground, which should be right here. So let's just tone that out and make sure. Grab our multimeter here. I'm going to touch this to K2 and to the, the chassis ground up here. All right, so we've confirmed that's K2. That makes that K3, and that makes that K4. If we remember from what we just looked at in the manual, K4 is got power when the ignition is on engine, uh, excuse me, uh, key on, engine off. So when you turn the key to the lamp test on the dash, you're going to have power on K4 right here. So that would make that a good test, right? So we're just going to come over here and hook a jumper from K4 to K3, just like that. And then we're going to come up and turn the key, and we're going to see if this lamp works. So come on up here without interrupting our test. We got no tone because we pulled the module out. And then we're going to have to turn our camera so that we can see that. And if we turn the key, there we go. We've got our seatbelt light lit now. So we've confirmed it is the module. Okay, so our safety belt indicator lamp lit up. We go to step three, replace the audio alarm module. So that was what was wrong. So in my case, we're done. But maybe in your case, you're not. So let me show you what would happen if that wasn't the case. 
if you did this test and the light still didn't come on, you would have went to four here and you would have had to pull the instrument cluster. Now you would have had to pull the instrument cluster anyway to check if the bulb was burned out in the first place. So maybe you just leave it off until you go through this whole thing. They would have then have had you put a fuse jumper from that same K3 cavity over to ground and then connect a test lamp on cavity cavity 30 rather of the instrument cluster connector and then check that to ground to see if the test light lit up. So there would be a test whether that was a pass or a fail as well. If that worked they would tell you that that's because you've got an open circuit on this 234 line so you would need to reference the schematic to figure out where that is and that would be the repair there if you did that and it still didn't work they would then tell you to come down and connect a test lamp from the instrument connector cluster connector to battery plus to see if the test lamp lit up eight would have taken you down to say that the instrument cluster itself was shot and you would be going down a path of having to replace it or try to repair the printed circuit board, the flexible board on the back of that, or 7 would have said that you had an open and circuit 451, which is the ground connector. And most of the time what that's going to be is corrosion or a bad connection on one of these two grounds. I did a video on how to check all these grounds. I'll link that up here on the right. If you end up down here, that could help you out. But that's basically this, this whole setup. So in our case, it's just going to be the module. Let me show you something back on the other section of the manual with that um, connector layout now that you've actually seen the convenience center and help map it back to what we showed earlier. All right, so coming back to the manual, guys, just a couple of things I want to point out. So, so notice the orientation, like I was saying, is like the inverted mirror image. When you're looking at it head on, this piece is going to be over on your upper left, and this piece is going to be facing to the upper left, and then the connections where you plug in this module are going to be to your right. So again, you know, what you're looking at here is if you were coming in from the firewall side looking in, and we're looking at it from the opposite view. The mirror view is how you should view this. Anyway, so this is the guy we've proven is causing the problem with not having that light up. Something inside this module must have uh, died. This is not anything that's serviceable. It's all glued shut. Um, you might you probably could open it up and try to figure out what's wrong with it, but we're just going to go ahead and replace it. So let me show you what we're replacing it with. All right, guys. So like the old one, I was saying that the part number, you can see silk screened on here or ink stamped, whatever you want to say, 1596963. Now this number is discontinued. You can't get it anymore. But that's one number you can get for this. The OEM to GM is Invotronics for this particular alarm module. Now what we're going to replace this with got a couple of different choices. This part was originally superseded by 1504247. I've got one of these. All right, so it's basically just the same thing, although it's got that different number inked on it here, right? So we can see the 1504247 on this one. This replaced the one that was used on the original assembly line. But this has now also been superseded and it's been discontinued. And the current number, and you can still get it at the time we're making this video, is 1924591. I have one of these as well. This is the current number that's still being produced. It's got a nice easy to read sticker on it. So either one of these will suffice for doing this repair. We're going to go with the older one on this truck, keep the new one for some other repair that we might need to do later. We're going to pop this guy in and see if it does our fix. If you end up wanting to open this up and try to fix it yourself, these four places here are plastic pins that were melted down to hold the two halves. So if you take a look here, you can see the male end connectors. They're all sitting on a board like this, right? And then these two pieces came together. There were little pins that went through here, and then they melted them on as part of the manufacturing process. You'll have to very carefully drill these out if you want to try and open this guy up. But um, it's inexpensive enough just to replace it. I picked this one up on eBay some time ago for about 20 three twenty four dollars right so that's all it's going to take to fix this repair so let's pop it in and see if it solves our problem all right guys let's see if this fixed the problem there we go so we've got our seatbelt indicator back that was our problem let me go show you another thing that could cause this though that i noticed when going through the service manual all right guys so what if that wasn't the problem even though we went through the diagnostic tree and we landed there there's a possibility that that's not the only reason for this problem. So if we take a look at the schematic for all the audible warnings, we see here's this audio alarm module, and we see here's the different P 
pins that it, we have on it that we looked at before when we did this repair. And one of the other things you'll want to check is maybe the problem is the switch in the seat. They don't go over that in the diagnostic tree, but it is a potential problem. So you can see there's a key in warning signal that's associated with the key in the ignition switch. That on pin J3 is what gets you the tone when you have the key in, but the engine's not started. And this switch over here on K1, when you have that same activation, detects whether or not the seat belt's fastened. And that switch is actually located in the housing for your, your seat belt coupler here, right? And so if we go back to the schematic, you know, it's inside this guy. If we go back to the schematic over here, another thing that can fail is that switch or the wiring, either, you know, the piece that goes here to G202 on the ground side or the wiring all the way up to the convenience center that provides the signal on K1 for this audio alarm module. That can also be a failure point. So I just thought I'd point that out to you. I noticed it on the schematic. It's not anywhere in the diagnostic tree, but it's obvious from the schematic this can be another source of failure. Anyway, we've got this fixed. There's two different ways you could go chase it. You could go chase it with the module like I did. You could go chase it with the switch. Or I also showed you on the diagnostic tree, you could go chase it if it's a wiring harness problem behind the convenience center. Go ahead and leave a comment below if you've got questions about this repair or you've got concerns about how you might have done it differently. I'd love to hear it. If you found this video useful and it got your stuff repaired and it saved you some money, go ahead and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.